Hello students, I'm Dr. Rohan Khandelwal. I'm a breast cancer surgeon and a surgery faculty. And continuing with our case discussion series, I'm going to talk about a case of a leg ulcer today. Now, this is also a very important uh, question for your MCQ exams, but also a common short case which final year students encounter in their college exams as well. Okay, So we have a 32 year old male who's come to the clinic with a rapidly increasing lesion in the right leg since the last four months, right? So the keywords are rapidly increasing and four months. Now it started off as a small coin shaped lesion, but has rapidly progressed to the current size, which we'll discuss later. Now a word of caution here, there are certain examiners who don't like you to use terms like coin shaped or lemon or uh, an orange. Right, so you need to know what is the prevalent trend in your college and act accordingly. Either you can mention the actual size that in patient's terms, it was two into two centimeters to start with and is approximately six into seven centimeters right now. So that is one way to go about it. Or you can use terms like a coin shape to an orange or, uh, you know, to a plate shape. So these are things which you need to know for your college and work accordingly there. Now the lesion was initially painless, but since the last one month, it is associated with constant pain. So this is also very important, painless turning into painful. And it is a seven on 10 on pain score. So you use the visual analog score whenever you're presenting history, you should take the visual analog score and then tell the examiner what the actual score was. And the pain is relieved by medications and any movement of the limb worsens the pain, okay? Now the patient is unable to put pressure on the limbs since the last 15 days due to pain and bleeding from the lesion. No other lesions are felt in the same or the other leg and no history of weight loss, swelling in the inguinal region or abdomen. To complete your history, there are no comorbid conditions. Their very important history here is there was a history of burns to both the lower limbs 12 years back, which was associated with scarring. No history of any surgical intervention, no addictions, right? So in case of a short case, you don't have to take a detailed history. The examiner will just ask you a summary. So the summary of the case of the history, at least would be a 32 year old male with a rapidly enlarging lesion over the right leg for the last four months associated with pain and difficulty in walking. And there is a history of burns involving both the lower limbs 12 years back. Now, your examiners might ask you, what is your impression after the history? So the impression is a rapidly enlarging lesion in the limb and past history of burns. Now this automatically, if, the, if this was an MCQ, what does that uh, come, what, what comes to your mind? It rings a bell that it's probably a margolins ulcer. You know, margolins ulcers are those which form over the area of a previously burned scar or venous ulcer scar okay on examination so you always comment on the normal limb first so you have to say that the left limb appears to be normal except for a three into two centimeter burn scar four centimeters above the medial malleolus i told you that there is a history of burns in both the legs okay now when examined the right limb was in a state of flexion at the hip and the knee joint. So this is describing the attitude of the limb. This is very important when you describe in examination, the limb, which has an ulcer, always remember, you just don't have to talk about the ulcer. You have to talk about the entire limb. The ulcer is just part of that limb, right? So don't focus all your attention on that ulcer that will be having too much of a tunnel vision. So describe the limb. And in that, you'll be able to describe the ulcer as well. As compared to the other limb, limb there is visible wasting, which you expect because the patient has been, hasn't been walking. But you should always measure the wasting with a measuring tape and you should take standard me measurements on both the sides. So probably you can go five centimeters above the medial malleolus or 10 centimeters above the medial malleolus on both the sides and do the measurement for the calf. Similarly, for the thigh, you can take a bony point reference and then you can measure it in the thigh as well. So in the exam, do measure it and then tell the examiner. Now there is a six into seven centimeter ulcer involving the anterior 
and the medial aspect of the leg. So you can see the ulcer here. It is 3 to 4 centimeters above the medial malleolus. Now, whenever you're describing an ulcer, it is very important. You don't miss out on any points. And I'll tell you a very simple way to remember an ulcer. The room which you're sitting in, if you remove the roof of that room, that becomes an ulcer. Okay? Anything where there's a loss of continuity or breach in the epithelium, that becomes an ulcer. Okay? So the walls of your room, the walls of the room are straight. They are punched out. Those are the edges. Right? The floor, the marble or the tile floor which you have, which you can see, that is the floor. But the cement which is holding the floor in place, that is the base. You can't see that but you can feel the hardness of that cement. So what you can feel is the base, what you can see is the floor. And margin is the point between the normal and the abnormal. So your room and the adjacent room, that is the margin. So that is a very simple way. Whenever you're confused, just picture yourself in that room. Make that room into an ulcer and just fill in the blanks. Seeing the patient, you'll be able to answer all the questions. So you have a 6 into 7 centimeter ulcer involving the, invo involving the anterior aspect and the medial aspect of the leg. 3 to 4 centimeters above the medial malleolus. The ulcer is present in the region of a pre-existing burn scar, which I've already told you. Measuring 10 into 8 centimeters, the ulcer has irregular margins, raised everted edges. You can see here, you can see, see the raised everted edges. You can see the area of burns adjacent. There is slough present on the floor. What you can see is the floor. There is slough present and there is oozing present as well. And the base is formed by the underlying bone which is exposed. Okay, so we've described the ulcer. Now we have to talk about the draining lymph nodes. So no palpable inguinal lymph nodes on the right side. Very important. You have to talk, talk about the vascular and the neurological examination whenever you're describing a limb as well. Okay. So you have to talk about arterial pulses proximal and distal to the lesion because you know, for all you might know, this might be an arterial ulcer. How do you rule that out? So make sure that the pulsations are present and no neurological deficit in the affected limb. So this is what you have to say, but if your examiner asks you, how do you demonstrate, how do you palpate pulses and how do you look for neurological examination, you should know about uh, all those things as well in detail. So that was our examination. So our impression is a 32 year old male with an ulcer in the right lower limb in the region of a previous burn scar. Okay. And the diagnosis now it is pretty obvious after seeing the image as well. It appears to be a Margolin's ulcer. Your examiner will always ask you what are the points in favor in history and examination. These are two very important things which you should know. Points in favor in history and examination. So in history here you know that the history of burns, rapid increase in size and a painless turning into painful. These are the points in history which suggest a Margolin's ulcer or a malignant process. The points in favor in examination are ulcer over a burn scar and raised everted edges. Okay. So you should also know the staging. If you know that it's a margillin's ulcer, once we confirm the diagnosis, this is the staging of cutaneous squamous cell carcinomas. Uh, so here you can see that our patient is a T4 because adjacent structures are involved. It is already going into the muscle. The bone is exposed. So it will be a T4 lesion. Usually lymph nodes are usually not enlarged in margillins. Lymph nodes are usually not enlarged in margillins. And you know the reason why. Why? Because of scarring. The lymphatics get scarred and lymphatic spread usually does not occur. Okay, but we should definitely examine the lymph nodes. Now, we've discussed in previous cases as well that how do we proceed? We'll always mention investigations under three headings. Investigations to confirm the diagnosis, to stage the disease and for the management of the patient. Now, for the diagnosis, will you do an incisional biopsy or an excisional biopsy? See here, please. This is the lesion which we have. Will you do an incisional or excisional? Will you take a chunk of it or you remove the entire lesion? 
we will take a chunk of the lesion and always always remember never take it from the center why because the center is necrotic so we always take it from the margin or the edge okay so we'll do an edge or a wedge biopsy to confirm the diagnosis it is usually a squamous cell carcinoma but rarely it can be a basal cell carcinoma as well rarely it can be a basal cell carcinoma usually it's squamous cell investigations to stage the disease here of course we would like to do an ultrasound of the inguinal region to see for the lymph nodes if the lymph nodes are quite enlarged you will also probably do an fnac although in such a case lymph nodes can also be enlarged due to infection or slough present there that could give rise to reactive lymphadenopathy as well sometimes but if they are there try to do an fna to confirm the diagnosis now the management here would be surgery we have to do a wide local excision to get negative margins and because you'll be left with a very big defect you would need a flap to cover up the defect and you all should also know that for margolins chemotherapy and radiotherapy have limited role right so this was the approach to a patient with a leg ulcer i fi finally our students i just want to tell you that you know when you're describing a short case be very pertinent to the point don't say unnecessary things which you can't defend because sometimes we have a tendency to say more and that is when the examiner catches us off guard and he'll start asking you things which are not pertaining to surgery as well okay like my professor always used to say the examiner is there to pass you and if he wants to really if he really likes you and if he wants to pass you he'll ask you your father's name but if he wants to fail you if you irritate him then he'll ask you his father's name which you definitely don't know okay so stick to the point say relevant things and you can easily get through to, uh, the case okay now if you like this video please do subscribe to the channel so that when i post more cases you'll be intimated about them also drop a comment regarding which other cases you want me to cover in this series where we are discussing uh, clinical cases thank you very much